All right, everybody. How lucky are we today that we are joined here by a survivor legend? Of course, you know her as the four time survivor player, the winner of Survivor Micronesia. Please welcome the amazing Parvati Shallow. Parvati, how are you? Whoa, thank you for that uh, heavy hitting introduction. Yes, yes. Thank you. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. I think the last time I uh, uh, got to see, well, you know, you you came by when we had the premiere party for the uh, 10 year anniversary. But the time before that was on the red carpet on the Winners at War premiere. Oh, yeah. Yes. So long ago. That was before life got. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know before, before everything, uh, poverty, uh, how are you doing? I'm good. It's, it's a challenging season for me, mm -hmm. personally, but, um, I am learning a lot. I'm moving through this time with a lot of support and, um, can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I know I'm not alone. I know a lot of people have also been going through some really big challenges in their lives and dealing with a lot of losses and grief. And this has been a big season of that for me yeah. for like a long time. Yeah. So it's required a different mindset. It's required a different kind of resilience than I've ever had to really embody before. Um, so yeah, I'm like taking it really one day at a time. Yeah. Well, I just want to pass along that first off, so many people were thrilled that you were going to come on and uh, talk with us on the podcast today. So uh, people have been hyped for since I had at first announced that it was coming up. And I just want to pass along that so many people have just poured out but like, please just tell Parvati that we love her and just, uh, you know, send her uh, it's just like all, all of the love. And so I just want to let you know how much, uh, especially the Robbins podcast uh, listeners just uh, want to send that to you. Oh, thank you so much. That's so touching. Like kindness makes me cry. And it's so funny because I watched this show called Atypical. Have you seen this show? It's no, so what is Atypical? It's, um, it's, I think it's on Netflix, but it's a show about a teenager who has autism and his family. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He loves penguins and he goes to the zoo because he has this penguin that is his best friend and he sits there and watches this penguin and then the zookeeper or the aquarium keeper I don't know what you call those people comes and is like do you want to meet the penguin and I started bawling like mm -hmm. oh my god that is so kind <laughs> so things like that like kindness of any type is very much getting through and touching my heart right now. I think yeah. we need more of that in the world. Okay, absolutely. So uh, Parvati, very excited to hear what you're thinking about this new era of Survivor. And uh, I, we were texting a little bit uh, yesterday and I was surprised uh, that, uh, yeah, I feel like that you are way into it. I'm into it. And I am so sorry for both of your losses back to back because I know your two favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Parvati asked me, uh, like, who are the players you like? And I, I was uh, like saying, like, oh, you know who was really, I loved Brad. Uh, I, I love JD. And Parvati said, of course you did. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he's like a survivor super geek and he just like wants to be, he has a whole list. He's got to check off the boxes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more to me than just that, Parvati. Well, yeah, you're a family man. You got a lot going on. Now you're a really holistic kind of guy. Yes, but yes. you still, deep down to your core, you're this OG JD. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. JD yeah. doesn't even know it, but he's modeled his entire life after Rob Sesson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think he modeled it after Wu and Malcolm, it sounds like, and Ozzy. I mean, but did he really? Because did he catch fish? I guess not. I guess not. We didn't see it. No, I think that was like his dream. It's like you think, you know, like you think you're like this superstar action hero. And then when you actually play the game, you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I'll just sit on the sand and maybe mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll get uh, some advantages. I'll like dig around and scratch mm -hmm. around. 
see what I can do. Well, you know, Parvati, I want to mention also up front that uh, I know you're working on something uh, that's pretty cool uh, that I feel like ties into, you know, maybe why you're looking at Survivor with more of like a, an acute eye than uh, you might be like if you were just watching uh, a regular season. Could you talk a little bit about uh, what you're working on? Yeah, I'm super excited about this. I've set up a six week course with a business professor from Kellogg. She's also an entrepreneur, really successful entrepreneur and a speaker. And she is a huge Survivor fan. So I met, her name is Suzanne Muchen. I met her through Ethan Zahn, who like introduced me to everybody. I've heard of him. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of him. Mm -hmm. Maybe. His reputation needs no introduction. Mm -hmm. But he connected me with Suzanne. She taught a course last year when Winners at War was airing called Sur Selling Yourself and Your Ideas Survivor Through the Lens of Survivor. So I was a guest on her course and she, the way she broke down how a player has to move through the phases of Survivor in order to win, I really resonated with it because I'm like, that is true in every way you have to be able to present yourself you have to know yourself you have to speak truthfully about who you are but you have to be really good at listening to other people and synthesizing their stories and what matters to them but then you have to be able to work with those different relationships and then also work with yourself in the way that your body and mind reacts in an arena of scarcity and competition it's mm -hmm. a lot like the workforce it's a lot like if you're building your own business and it can be a lot like the dating world i mean it's survivor you know has it touches on so many different uh arenas in real life so suzanne and i have now joined forces and we're combining her course and my course which was hero's journey which was a seven week program about really how to take your life to the next level and um and define a version of success that works for you. Mm -hmm. so define winning in your own terms. What do you want? What does winning look like in your life? How yeah. to make money from the businesses that you want to create? Like what you're doing, Rob. Like someone like you would be perfect for the course, but you're already at like a threshold of success because you've- uh, I could get better, Parvati. We can all get better. We can all mm -hmm. get better. If mm -hmm. you want to be a full-on mogul- Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll come to you. So I really, I love this idea though, because I feel like that um, when we take a look at like, uh, you know, all these ideas about survivor strategy, survivor strategy, like there's very few of us that are actually going to go and play survivor. And I'm sure there are, there are people that are listening to this today that they, in the, one day in the future, they will go and play survivor, but the majority of people won't. So I think that like, what is nice is when we take away like things that we're talking about from survivor and then apply them, how to practically like uh, help us in our real lives based on what we're doing, spending so much time with this show Survivor. Yeah. And I, I feel like, I don't know if you feel the same way, that life has become more and more like Survivor recently since all this pandemic has happened. And there's so much fear and so much- Like it used to be better a few years ago? Like, is that what you're saying? Like it used to be a little more <laughs> predictable. Yeah. Yeah. At least, like, I wouldn't say better necessarily. There wasn't as many twists, right? There weren't as many twists. There weren't as many hidden advantages or disadvantages mm -hmm. or people trying to steal your stuff and not kick you out of the game. Like, yeah, I think that since this pandemic has occurred, so many people's lives have been really disrupted in a lot of ways. Like, think about it. You're working from home. You had to adapt. Like, yeah. you need quiet yeah quality time and space and your kids are running around going crazy mm -hmm. and so many other people are dealing with similar things like that where the old predictable ways of handling life they're not working anymore because life is so different and it's unfolding in more unpredictable ways and we're losing people that really matter to us so like our foundation has been shaken so i do i see so many parallels to what is happening in the world right now how isolated people feel, how much we crave and really need community and connection and tribes. And like, you have to create that in Survivor for yourself because you're starting the mm -hmm. game with no real connections unless it's a returnee season. Right. But people are having to do that now in their real lives. Well, 
Harvey, uh, I'd love to ask you a little bit about what you saw last night from uh, this uh, vote where it was, you know, the biggest blindside of the season. J.D., who I really thought was going to be around for the long haul. I thought he was really being set up to be a big character on the show. And then here comes Shan, who's just decided, you know what, I got to move on from this. And I'm wondering, uh, did you like that? I do. Yes. <laughs> I mean, of course I like that. I really really vibe with shan i like her a lot and um then i found her on instagram and i was like this girl is hilarious have you followed her on instagram uh i'm uh, also following her on tiktok oh i didn't even i don't have tiktok she's so uh, yeah uh, that she's a phenomenon she's a superstar i told her that too i was like I'm sorry, you're totally a superstar. And I hope you're really owning that. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's hard, especially because she comes from this world of faith based. Uh, she's very religious. She's, isn't she a preacher? Yes, pastor. Yeah. She's a, pa yeah. So like one would assume that she's coming in to play this very like moral high ground kind of game. And she's really not. She's playing a game that seems to me very aligned with knowing that she's playing a game like she's coming in and she's like i'm playing this game that's do or die that's cutthroat that is she said it last night in tribal council that if i don't kill someone else's dreams i'll kill my own and that was so telling to me to hear her say that because i'm like this girl's out to win like she's that's the mindset you have to have when you're playing survivor to win mm -hmm. it's like all right she said jd was her family and she took his secret advantage and blindsided him and mm -hmm. did the same thing to Brad the week before who was like devoted to her. So for me, I'm like, I got to really trust her intuition because she's so devoted to her faith. I believe that she has this voice inside that's guiding her and she's making some really brave moves um, that I think that she feels really confident about. And I trust that with her. I just think she's like, Fierce, she's strong, she's unapologetic. And the way that she blindsides people, she does it where they, I think they'll still like her enough to vote for her in the end, should she. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that you brought up intuition. How much did you tap into intuition when you played Survivor? You have to, like you have to. And the way to tap, like when I, when I won season 16, it was, all on intuition and it was all from this first I made a commitment to myself that I was going to win that game and I've decided before I even stepped into the arena I was like I'm here to win and I will do whatever it takes to win and then blindsiding Ozzy at the time that I blindsided him bringing in the women at the time I brought them in like all of that was not pre-planned like nothing was pre-thought out and like the strategy that I had all of my ducks set up I had to move with what the game was giving me in any given moment. And in order to do that, you have to have a relationship with your intuition enough to hear the voice. Cause you know, those producers will get right in your head. Mm -hmm. And those producers will be like, but don't you think it's a good idea to, what mm -hmm. about this person? This is like a really trustworthy person. And if you think that the producer has more information than you or is more of authority, more of an authority than you are, or if you think another contestant is more of an authority than you are, then you're not gonna do well because you'll give away your power to other people. So you always have to remember, you have to become the one who is the least uncertain. Harvardy, how do you know that voice is right? You know the voice is right because you have already made your decision that you're gonna win. So you've committed to that and you have if you're following the voice and it's an enthusiastic, I'm moving in this direction because I want to, then you can trust that it's right. If there's a, I'm moving in this direction because I'm afraid I'm going to lose something, then you're in trouble. Got it. It's a really, that's like, that's the dance. Cause you have mm -hmm. to be able to just, you have to be able to discern what's motivating my action. Is it fear? Or is it, I'm enthusiastic about this, or I'm excited about this, or this is something I want to do. You can and always, always go with what's what you're excited about. That's right. Always. Okay. 
And sometimes, I don't know, like you, we really don't know what is going to happen afterwards. Like who knows what's going to happen afterwards. But as long as you are following the voice that's moving you towards, I'm enthusiastic about this. I'm scared, but I'm also enthusiastic or I'm excited or this seems in like, I'm curious, then you can always trust that that is the right direction for you. Barbara. I know a lot of people want to hear you talk about Shan uh, getting the extra vote from JD, because I think that for a lot of viewers, uh, it reminded them a little bit of what happened to Eric of uh, giving up his advantage and obviously different circumstances. Uh, I spoke with JD this morning. He said he was going to get voted out whether or not he gave that extra vote to Shan. But uh, did that uh, in any way uh, feel familiar to you? Yeah, I think that's why I love her so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, because it seemed to me that she did that on her own. But when it came to Eric and the immunity necklace, that was a that was very much a team play. Yes. That wasn't me moving on my own. So with Shan and JD, it does look like Shan's got a number one, like super tight ally with Ricard. It doesn't seem, it seems like those two are like, really tight yes but we're not seeing a lot of ricard like they're saying he's masterminding stuff but we're really not seeing a lot of his gameplay or whatever he's masterminding so if it was really her idea and she just played up so well that she was so worried and she needed to get that thing that vote that was really genius if she was already planning on voting out JD because she'd already set the precedent before he'd given her the vote the last time mm -hmm. so it wasn't like oh this is like outrageous for her to ask for it again she's already mm -hmm. gotten it before he, he's already proven he'll give it to her and he trusts her that much so her asking for it again is like well there's a there's like an implicit yes bias that he's already done this once before mm -hmm. so why not just grab it and then vote him out if she doesn't trust him anyways and he seemed a bit squirrely like mm -hmm. he wants to play he wants to check off the list like if i'm sitting in her were in her shoes i would be like yeah this guy wants to check off all these boxes i'm probably going to be a box that he's mm -hmm. going to check off so yeah. better to get him now while we have the chance before emerge because emerge is definitely coming for them probably really soon yeah, it's hard to tell because uh, I was talking about this last night with Stephen of, you know, it's only like day eight or day nine. Like, I know we're getting into like, hey, we just watched episode four. So it's probably, you know, happening in an episode or two. I really I don't know if maybe when they get down to 12, they'll do two tribes of six and we'll see that for a little while. But this is uh, we're in uncharted territory. Uncharted, and it's only 26 days. So mm -hmm. it's like, gosh, you don't even have to be able to starve that well. Like, yeah. Remember what it used to be like. And then when Shan said this last night, this is my- I have a, yeah, I have a, yeah, I have a <laughs> question for you only... about this. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yeah, basically the, the question was uh, like, I, I want to hear Poverty say when uh, the survivors are saying that this is the, the hardest survivor ever, uh, how does, uh, like, if this is more survivor than any other survivor, how does Poverty feel about that? You, Rob, I think you know how I feel about that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a joke. Mm -hmm. That is a joke. They have been only playing for eight days. <laughs> like, yeah. no. Part of Survivor, part of the thing that makes it so difficult is not only like the gameplay aspect of it, the strategy, the people, the different personalities, having to like navigate the advantages and surprises. But the other part of it is how does your body react when you are starving, when mm -hmm. your basic needs are not being met and you're completely depleted? And if it's only 26 days, like, mm -mm, you can't say this is the hardest survivor ever. No, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Mm -hmm. Because if, the longer you starve, the harder it gets. Yeah. You've had four very different uh, experiences. Uh, I think you've been in a different place every single time that you played. What was the hardest one of the four? Well, the hardest one of the four for me was this last one that I played. And it was really because I had a, uh, almost 10 months old when I left. Yeah. So before I left to play Survivor, like normally if I'm going to go play Survivor, 
I have been working out, I've been boxing, I've been doing yoga, I've been reading books to prepare my mind to go back into that like war kind of space. And this time I was like breastfeeding and had been pregnant and had a baby and my body was just like, like so not where Mm -hmm. it had been before. So I think in my mind with this one, I wasn't prepared. And I walked into season 40 and I was scared. And I've never been scared walking into Survivor. I've always, always felt like I can rely on myself in this game. I'm good at this game. I know how to navigate whatever comes my way. But this time I was so different going in for season 40. Like I didn't know my body. It was new. Like I didn't, I was crying all the time. Like I was like, who am I? It was so great. That was really, really hard for me. And then in addition to that, I hadn't left, I hadn't left my baby for like two nights, you know, mm-hmm. right, let alone six weeks. Right. So that, that was why it was so hard. And then I was voted out so early and went to Extinction Island where it was just like, everyone's depressed. <laughs> It's like a zombie walking around. Mm -hmm. So even like the the gameplay aspect, it's when you're playing the game, you're in it. And so there's always something to look forward to. And there's some like twist or turn or idol to dig for, or like something that keeps you like a carrot that keeps you kind of like moving forward through the crap, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, like we need that in our lives. Yeah. Like that's why we have holidays. Like we have to have something to look forward to, to like keep us going. But on the edge of extinction, there really wasn't that until I found the peanut butter and like dug into that yeah. uh, situation and turned it into like peanut butter Island. But yeah, it was really like, that was hard because being around people who are really, who've lost their fighting spirit. Um, that's, that's a difficult place to be if you're already feeling depleted and sad, which is, Mm -hmm. I was so sad. I was like, I want my baby. Did it take a lot of arm twisting for you to go back and to do winners at war? Because I feel like that you, um, uh, I never thought that you uh, would be interested to go do it again. I never wanted to do it again. Yeah. (laughs) No, but the FOMO really got me. It really did. It was like the worst timing ever. I was like, don't, I have a six month old baby. When they called me for casting, I was like, I'm not going to do this. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. And then it just stuck in my head. And I was like, God, it's going to be all winners. It's going to be like the season of all seasons. Oh, and I was like, how could I not? And you know, Rob, I had gone back a bunch of times. To the press, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, I, I have a relationship with some of the producers and the, you know, the cast, the crew who does like the cameras and the sound and all, and like Matt and Jeff and everybody. And I was just like, I want to go. That was kind of what pushed me over the edge where it was just like, I can't Mm -hmm. this else. I think I'll regret it a lot. Um, And so it was a really, really hard decision, but I ended up getting to a place where I was like, okay, I got a full-time nanny. We were in Georgia, close to my parents. I was like, the baby, she's gonna survive this. She's gonna be okay. I'm gonna make sure she's taken care of so I can take that aspect off my mind. Um, And then I was just like, okay, I'm doing it. And Mm -hmm. it it really helped me too, to kind of remember myself and like meet myself in a new way as I had like transitioned to becoming a mom, but it was so new. And I was so like in that tunnel, that like vortex of being a mom where I was just like giving, 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 constantly taking care of this little creature, building a business, my coaching business at the same time. And so I was like giving, 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 giving. And then me going back out and playing Survivor was like the most alone time I'd had. Mm -hmm. And like, I would, I would sit and have a conversation with Tyson and Tyson would be like talking about nothing. And I would look at him like, what is happening? Like we can, we can have a conversation about nothing. Like it was about clouds in the sky or something. And I was just like, this is so not what my life is like. Like, I don't have 
I didn't have any extra time to have an adult conversation with another person about nothing. Wow. And it, it really rocked me. I was like, oh, huh. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's really cool that I feel like that, at least from what, what I've seen on social media, that like uh, you and uh, Ethan, of course, I know that you've been friends uh, forever, but like uh, with Rob and, and Tyson, that I, I feel like that like there's like a core group of people that you were out there uh, with during season 40 that has like stayed really close. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. I think that was that was one of my favorite things, too, from playing season 40 was getting tight with Tyson and Rob and Amber and even closer with Ethan and then uh, Michelle like meeting her mm -hmm. she's so funny and she and I have like very similar kind of situations with family members and so we bonded over that and yeah she, I think she's hilarious um so yeah that was that was a nice uh bonus mm -hmm. from playing that game yeah all right. And Michelle and Ethan are going to be guest speakers in my group, in my program. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I haven't talked to Tyson yet, too, but I'm pretty sure he'll also. Will he talk about clouds? Yeah, he can talk about clouds. No, Tyson has come on. He's been a guest speaker for a lot of my coaching groups. And his wisdom is pretty deep. It's like mm -hmm. powerful. He makes people cry all the time with his wisdom. Yeah, because I, I don't think people think that he has a deep side to him because uh, that I do feel like, uh, you know, I podcast with Tyson every week and I think that people uh, just hear like uh, that side of him. But then he can like uh, switch that gear on where, you know, he can be like, uh, you know, uh, very deep and like introspective about things. Yeah, and he, the way he articulates his ideas and the way he's like moved through his life is so unconventional but he really grounds it in a way that anyone could do it. Mm -hmm. So it's, he gives like very practical, helpful advice for people. Mm -hmm. Is I that helpful that. that you just, you surround yourself with all these winners and then it's, it's just like uh, you put all your brains together and can figure out all these problems. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. <laughs> Easy, uh, <right? laughs> yes. So, Parvati, uh, this is, a, you know, they made a whole big thing about this is the new era of Survivor. Do you like uh, what they've done so far with the new season? I think it's really interesting. I, ha okay, I, this might be a controversial thing to say, but okay. I'm going to say it anyways. I think Jeff might be having a bit of an identity crisis. Okay, interesting. Why? Because I think he's just, he's coming in and he's like, all right, I got to be super woke. I got to say all the right things to make sure, you know, that all the different groups of people are feeling heard and seen. And mm -hmm. Jeff is someone who like, he likes to see and hear people. He does. He's, he's someone who really wants to touch the heart of someone. He wants to know a person. And now he's like bringing, he's really infusing a lot of that into this season um, as far as the culture of Survivor. Mm -hmm. is um, in this new era i've noticed that jeff is like really embracing his therapist version of host and then on top of that there's also like the long hair there's also the getting rid of the come on in guys there's like some of these little i think he's doing wardrobe changes like mm -hmm. it, right the blue shirt i don't know you you probably know better than me yeah i haven't changes. noticed so much the wardrobe uh different changes on the on the show but i i have seen some like unusual uh, uh wardrobe choices like if you ever play like the game within the game there's like a video that pops up and uh, you know jeff has some interesting wardrobe choices there oh i haven't i haven't yeah Maybe I'll have to check that out yes but yeah and they were showing some of the behind the scenes in the beginning the first yeah. episode they showed like the camera crew yeah it really broke the fourth wall there so i think what he's doing and what they're doing with the show is like really wanting to let people in side a little bit more to see kind of how the magic is made um but i don't know i mean i think that's cool because i loved witnessing that as a contestant like it's it's a massive production like the amount of people that are involved sure. in creating survivors huge so it's kind of cool to see that but then it, it does take away a little bit of that sort of they're stranded on an island piece, you know, mm -hmm. you see all the cameras and stuff there. That sort of mystique is pulled away. 
and then people are still in their underwear. So I'm sorry, some one of these things has to go. People need to get bathing suits. Yeah. Or they need to keep the cameramen behind the scenes. I know that this has been um, a thing that's been talked about in season 41. What did they do in season 40? You, you uh, did not get bathing suits? No, it was underwear. Yeah. I put up a huge fight. I was like, I just had a baby. I can't be out here in my underwear. Like, I'm, I'm like a mom now. <laughs> like, need a baby. What did they say? They were like, sorry. Um, they feel that pr- the production feels that it's more uh, authentic looking for mm-hmm. people to be in their underwear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I said, no, no, no. It's not like everybody knows it's a show. And now, you're showing people it's a show by showing the cameraman. So like, mm-hmm. let people wear their bathing suit, give them some dignity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty authentic if people are on the beach that they're wearing bathing suits. I mean, I feel like, that. you know, if I go to the beach, that tends to be what I see mostly. <laughs> not underwear? Yeah, I mean, not, but again, I mean, I'm going to the wrong beach. <laughs> yeah, I Maybe mean, there's better beaches to go to, but in most beaches that I go to. Right. Yeah. People wear mm-hmm. underwear. I mean, bathing suits. And that's, like it was a whole era of survivor where it was bathing suits. And then all of a sudden they switched to underwear and they're just not never going back. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. doesn't, underwear doesn't stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why they shortened the season and they made it shorter. So people. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I got to think that the next, when they go back to film at, you know, 43, I think that that's got to be one of the things that they change. Cause there's been, you know, a, a lot of uh, not so great press about that. It's like, too, it's stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's an easy one. That's a, of all the things they could fix. Uh, that's that's an easy one. Um, you know, last night we saw Deshaun trying to throw a challenge in trying to uh, get rid of Erica. Poverty, were you ever part of a group that was considering throwing a challenge? I was part of a group that considered throwing a challenge, but it was not like. Okay, so in Micronesia, this is a story I I don't think I've ever told this story. So in Micronesia, we had the tribe swap and Amanda was my number one and Sari, and they were on the other tribe. Right. And I got swapped over. So I was with like Natalie and James and uh, Alexis and everybody over there. So this challenge, it was an immunity challenge. It was where we had to like run across logs and like it was a big obstacle coursey thing. And Amanda, and Sari are mouthing at me. Mm-hmm. Like trying to get me to throw it. So we would lose because they thought I was like in a good spot over there, I guess. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this like send myself to tribal council. Like, I don't know if I'm in a good spot or not. Right. It's not, I don't think it's ever, ever a good idea to throw a challenge. I really do not subscribe to that. I think like try to win as every time as best you can. But yeah, they were like, like lose, lose, lose. And I was like, why? Because they seemed like they were in a great spot. They had like Eric. They they kept losing though. They could have voted off or they could vote off Jason or something. Yeah, I don't know. Did they, they lost a lot? Cause we had James. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so uh, poverty. I don't know if you know this. That uh, in 2021, I had gone back and watched every season. For we had no survivor to talk about. We watched every single season. We ranked the seasons. That was the fourth best season of all time. Oh, what's number one? Heroes versus villains. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, you're you're all over this thing. Wrong and, winner, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, the, but that that group uh, like doesn't ever go to tribal council that you're at, uh, but you keep getting like people like evacuated from the game. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> people that I needed evacuated. I really mm-hmm. needed them evacuated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, that's true. That was really crazy. And, um, and then like James got his finger cut and got that crazy infection. So that challenge that they wanted me to throw, Amy was voted out that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't even know like what was going on over there, but I was like, honestly, I don't care. You guys deal with it. And hopefully Amanda and Sari are still around by the time we come back together. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't think I've ever been on a tribe that's tried to lose a challenge. Have you? 
no, no. Uh, unless the, the tribe t- tried to lose the, throw the challenge to get rid of me. Uh, no, I don't think I've ever been a part of that specific scenario. That's good. You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but what, what do you think about, uh, the idea of, uh, Luvu trying to throw the challenge? I don't like throwing a challenge. I just don't like it. I think, um, they have a problem because they, what happens when people win too much is they get antsy, especially now it seems like the game is moving so fast that if the contestants aren't making moves, the game is going to move beyond them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really hard dynamic to hold. Like if you feel like life is moving so fast around you, all your friends are getting married, all your friends are getting promoted, all your friends are getting jobs. Like everyone is like succeeding and you're the one who's like sitting here, like do still doing job interviews, trying to figure out what you're doing with your life. That is a really, really difficult place to be. And I really see that's what happens with these tribes that win, 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 because they're just together. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we are gonna have to vote people out at some point, but you have to like, you have, especially on Survivor and in life, you have to play the phase of the game that you're in. And if you can make really strong relationships with the people that you're with and you're winning, that is the best possible place you can be. You're gonna go into the next situation with these relationships intact, unless you're like running around scrambling too soon mm-hmm. and throwing people's names out there. Cause now Sydney and who's the girl who's throwing her name out? Erica. Her- Erica is like, they're never gonna be able to trust each other. So it's like, duh, too soon, too much. No, like you gotta slow it down slow yourself down and just like calm your body in mm-hmm. those moments when you want to open your mouth and be like, let's vote this person out. Yeah. And then just wait and then, and just do your best to win, do your best to win, go in strong and then see what happens. I, I just firmly fully believe like the, the less you go to tribal council, the better. Mm-hmm. Right. Like yeah. truly only go if you have to. Yeah. Seems like a winning strategy to me. Yeah. Parvati, you're making you're making so much sense. Do you uh, do you coach Survivor also? <laughs> I don't go. Co- I don't coach Survivor players, but I do have a lot of coaching clients who are right now auditioning for Survivor. Mm-hmm. You've never coached any Survivors. I don't think I've coached any Survivors. I can't think of any. Mm-hmm. No. All right. Talk to me a little bit about. We have this other tribe, Yasa. And it looks like that Evie has uh, their core group uh, with Liana and with Tiffany. And some people are thinking maybe this could be maybe a formidable women's alliance on Survivor. Are you seeing that? I am so glad you brought that up because I had that thought this morning. I was like, I'm going to talk to Rob about this. I think we are being primed for a pretty powerful season of women. Mm-hmm. We've got Shan, Sydney's talking a big game. So hopefully she can pull something off and like back that up. And then Tiffany, girlfriend, she can like throw stuff. I'm like, that is a really big talent that I have never had. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you need someone, you really need someone in your alliance who can throw stuff and who has good aim. Mm-hmm. So I would have her in my alliance for sure. Yeah, I do think we're being set up for for a nice, powerful women's alliance. And Ricard, I think he'll probably be in the fold. Do you think that there's anything to this that there's been now? It's been six seasons since we've had a woman win the game. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, Sarah Lucina was the last woman that won the game. And that was like four and a half years ago. Whoa, I didn't even know that. I mean, and you've played in the most recent season. I mean, do you feel like that the the game has changed since, uh, you know, uh, playing in like the middle era of the show? Well, yeah, the game's changed in significantly since then. Um, just in all of the like advantages and twists. And with our game, there was tokens and you were like buying stuff and selling. Mm-hmm. It wasn't wasn't even remotely the same kind of survivor experience that I have played before. And it's a lot more, people are more willing to cut their relationships 
than I was ever willing to do. Like mm-hmm. back when I played, back when I played Survivor, it was snowing and I had to walk barefoot. To drive a council uphill That's both ways. Right. Yeah. But we actually did have to rope. We had to paddle a boat and put mm-hmm. a fake paddle out every single time we'd get soaked before tribal council. Yeah. Now, they don't have to do that. They don't even show boat shots anymore. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. Yeah. We had a fake boat. No, but I do think what's been happening is it has become more, the game has become more masculine in that, in the way that it's, it's less about coming together and really working together as a tribe for surviving. Like people are just willing to starve. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to be the provider because being the provider means I'm away from camp too long. People are going to strategize against me and then I'll get voted out. So there's nobody really stepping into like the feminine aspect of the game, which would be the nurturing, the providing, the like spending time bonding with people, deepening connections, those kinds of things. I think what has really risen to the surface with this new season, these new seasons of Survivor is it is a very masculine game. It is very fast paced. You have to be, you have to be armored up and on all the time like you can't let your guard down ever you can't trust even your closest ally to not blindside you when you have an advantage in your pocket you don't know can i share this information with someone is that going to help me or do i keep this to myself is that going to help like there's no real way of Mm -hmm. knowing that externally it's a very masculine arena which is why i think the people who can tune in to their intuition, which is more of like a feminine trait is the ability to slow down and listen to what's happening inside your body and follow that guidance. Those people will be able to slow down time so that they don't get so caught up in the like fast paced current of how fast the game is going and make rash moves and throw someone's name out before they really need to throw someone's name out those people will succeed and do well, but that's a really Mm -hmm. big ask. That's really hard to do. But when you're talking about, you know, uh, cut your closest ally and, you know, uh, be able to, you know, get uh, an advantage from somebody else. I mean, you're talking about the things that we're, we're seeing Shan do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's someone who I think can, can really like, um, work in both worlds. Mm -hmm. I think she can work inside of the fast paced, dynamic of what's happening in the game i think she's reminds me of kim spradlin a lot actually yeah you see that i mean um i i definitely uh can see uh you know what you're saying uh, you know i've always been you know a big fan of what kim has done on survivor she's got that kim spradlin vibe where she like doesn't come off as threatening mm-hmm. she doesn't have this like in your face she's not aggressive she knows when to play the like poor me i'm a vulnerable woman card but then she can also she knows she's actually playing it it's not like she's actually really feeling that way and she can make relationships with all different types of people without coming across as a threat kim was so good at that Mm -hmm. I i just feel like they have a kindred spirit those two did you uh get to become close with kim when you were on the edge with her yeah, Kat. I love Kim. I think mm-hmm. um, I think she's awesome. And we got closer on the edge and then we stayed in touch. And she's been a guest on some of my uh, coaching programs as well. So I'll call her too. She's got a new HGTV yes. show. Yes, yeah, she's very busy. <laughs> yeah, she's crushing it. And she has a new store she just opened in San Antonio. She's like, yeah, she's awesome. I love yeah. her. Parvati, um, I have some questions for you from the listeners. And so I'd love to uh, fire away a couple of these to see what you think about this. Um, This is a question from Holly Elaine who wants to know, would Parvati pick up the beware advantage, leave it be or trick somebody else into picking it up? I would probably pick it up. Yes. I know because I'm just too curious. I know, but... I was I saw this question and I thought it was uh, such a good one because that you have talked about uh, in our conversations before about how in Survivor Micronesia, 
you went to Exile Island and you found the idol there and you left it because uh, you didn't want to deal with, you know, oh, you would have to, maybe you might have to play it for uh, uh, Amanda if you want immunity. And um, I, I was thinking that maybe it would be similar. Okay, here's the difference. <laughs> the difference is with the immunity idol, I knew what it was. Yes. So I knew I was going to go for it and I was going to do my best to find it. But I also knew that finding it wouldn't be helpful. Like taking it home wouldn't be helpful. So I knew what it was and I knew how I would work with it if I'd gotten it. But with a be, if something's just like hanging from a tree and it says beware, <laughs> like I would for sure pick it up mm -hmm. because there's it's a mystery and I'm just fascinated. I like have to know. So I would probably pick it up off the tree and then I would deal with the fallout or whatever I had to do afterwards. But this season, it seems that those beware advantages are pretty great because they just like you just go to another island and like hang out with other people and maybe you lose your vote. Did they lose their vote? None of them lost their vote. Well, that that you know, sometimes you have to, you have like uh, what Brad and Xander had, where then you have to say the crazy phrase to try to get the idol activated. <laughs> That's so weird. Mm -hmm. Do you like <laughs> that or no? <laughs> um, I feel I, like you could pull it off. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny how like Xander's Xander does a pretty good job pulling it off. He seems like he's an eccentric guy, anyways. So mm -hmm. he's like that mm -hmm. and I could too for sure like oh like spiritually I feel like the butterflies are these like dead people talking to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I could definitely work with that I think it's 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 always fun to be playing a secret game that other people don't know about and that's how I felt about um the edge of extinction with the peanut butter it was like people like a lot of people didn't know about that. And it was this like fun little secret game that we were playing. So mm -hmm. I like, as a contestant, I like, oh, there's all these different like advantages and secret things happening and little like, little like um, games inside of the bigger game. I think mm -hmm. that's fun, but it's also like, it also changes things so much and, and adds so much more luck into the game and yeah. a lot less strategy. So I think luck plays a much bigger role in the way Survivor is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely uh, a lot more randomness uh, injected into everything. Uh, Derek wants to know, Parvati has a bit of experience being on a small tribe with no options from uh, winners at war. Uh, what does she think somebody in a spot like Xander can do to survive? Is Xander in a bad spot? Because there's... I mean, no there is Evie and Liana and Tiffany, and uh, potentially, he could, especially now that Tiffany has really come on in the challenges, uh, Xander could be in a bad spot. Yeah. Well, the thing that... The only things that people can do, like, so, like someone like Xander, who's in a... He's on the bottom of a four-person situation he has to win challenges that's number one and then number two is like work any kind of angle he possibly can and if he can start to create some kind of uh some kind of scenario where it makes sense for someone to keep him that he could be like a number for someone or mm -hmm. he could make he could either he could either appeal to someone's sense of I can protect you and keep you safe or I can be a number for you and like go to them with his like hands and knees begging or he could do like the Russell Hans move and just cause a bunch of chaos and like start infighting within the group I mean there's like a bunch of stuff he could do mm -hmm. it just depends on who he is because he's gonna play like he, it, you can't play not yourself you have mm -hmm. to like you're yourself. You have to be yourself. So he's going to be himself. And if his help, his himself can be some kind of like devious, mischievous, little like uh, impish kind of guy. And he can take a play from Tony and do some spying and get some information where one of the girls is talking trash on the other girls and he can bring that forward. That could be helpful. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of game left to play. I think like 
people forget that until your torch is snuffed, you're playing like you can always survive. You can always get through. There's always going to be some opening if you want to win mm -hmm. that you can get through. There's going to be something that reveals itself. Something's going to happen. This game's moving so fast. There's so many little like things popping up everywhere. There's going to be some kind of merge. I just know like anything is possible as long as you believe that. Mm -hmm. Justin Fetich uh, wants to know if instead of Nathan as a reward, reward Nathan was the guy that came and uh, helped out around the, the camp. Uh, what if Parvati was flown to Fiji to teach the Ua tribe how to survive? Uh, what lessons would you teach that group? <laughs> I don't think I'd be as helpful as sweet Nathan. <laughs> I've tried to climb coconut trees like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do it. Um, as far as survival skills, not great. I mean, I went and did a, I took a free diving course before I went back for season 40. And I was like, all right, I'm going to provide, like, I'm going to catch fish and do stuff. And I went out spear fishing so many times yeah. and I got zero fish. Yes. What, and once the game started. Yeah. When yeah. I Ever. I have never caught a fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, you don't want me to come and teach you how to survive. It's not really my uh, forte. I'll teach you how to get keep your mind right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what you could uh, be teaching the group. I Yes, that's what I'll be teaching the group. Like, get your mind right. Don't be overreacting. Don't be reacting too impulsively when your things are moving a little too slow for your comfort. Mm -hmm. Like you just, because that's the thing with Survivor, Rob, you know this, you're sitting on the beach, like waiting. Yeah. In anticipation of like something is gonna happen and I don't know what that thing is gonna be. Is it gonna be Christmas morning or is it gonna be someone coming and taking my vote away? Like you don't know. So how do you stay calm? Yeah. How do you relax so you can bond with people in an authentic way in the during the downtime? Okay. Well, Mackenzie asked a question about that. Parvati speaks a lot about meditation, resilience, and building your mental strength. We saw her use this on Winners at War, and I'm curious, how have those helped you in a game like Survivor? And what was something that you practice on all of your seasons to stay focused and grounded in the game? Oh, wow. What a great segue. Excellent question. Um, I've done, I did so much yoga before Cook Islands even, before Cook Islands, before any time I played Survivor, yoga is like, that is how I stay in my body. Yeah. And like can calm myself down. Cause Survivor is something that's just like so disruptive and dysregulating and like disorienting. It's all the disses. And it's like so easy to be like, brah, like your head explodes. And if you're playing with someone like Russell Hands, how do you even remotely handle that? <laughs> you did a good job. Thank you. And I did my very first in-person yoga class. I took my very first in-person yoga class two days ago. Oh. Since the pandemic. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. Because what I've noticed when I practice yoga, this is what happens to me. Everything slows down. All I'm feeling is my body and different points in my body. All I'm paying attention to is the posture because it's a challenging posture. If you're doing a vinyasa flow class, it's hard. So I'm holding steady in a challenging physical position. And then I'm breathing deeply in that space. Mm -hmm. Survivor really requires that. It really requires a person being able to hold steady, being able to stay grounded and calm when something is really hard and scary and yeah. stressful. Yeah. And like yoga just is the perfect for me. It really works. It really works. I don't know. It's not for everyone, but it really works for me. And then like my, and then my perception will blur. Like when I'm in a pose, 
it's not about what I'm seeing with my eyes anymore. It's more about what I'm feeling. And you also, that's also really helpful in Survivor because mm-hmm. you can't always trust what you're seeing with your eyes. People will yeah. lie straight to your face. Was there something about being back in the group of people in person that was different than when you've done it at home during the pandemic? Yes. It's so nice to be in a community, mm-hmm. practicing with a community in a yoga studio because there's an energy that a yoga studio holds that just like instantly will drop me into like a meditative state. It's like when you have like a favorite chair and you're just like, oh, this is my relaxation chair. I sit in this chair and I feel relaxed. Like that's what it is for me when I walk into a yoga studio. I mm-hmm. like instantly feel that. And then I can be in the class. And it's something about like not being at home too. Cause when you're at home, it's like dishes in the sink, laundry. Oh, I got to have food ready for Amma when she gets back from school. Like all those things are yeah. still in the back of my mind. Like, do I really have time to do this yoga right now? Mm-hmm. But if you physically drive yourself to the studio and you like park your car and you pay your parking meter and you get in there, it's like, huh, you can't see any of that other stuff that would be really distracting mm-hmm. at home. Okay. I think, I think people need that. Barb, uh, We're here Al- in a retreat space too, Rob. I have a house in the desert that my friend Kim, not Spradlin, but- yes. um, a different Kim a renovated and it's nearly ready. It's in Joshua Tree. Another home renovated in Kim? I know. Isn't it crazy? I'm yeah. just surrounded by that. And you go to the desert home and you can just re- like relax. And, and I'm going to lead some yoga retreats there. Okay. Wow. So people will be able to practice yoga in person in the desert with me at this space when I'm ready to announce that. Okay. Parvati, uh, Ali wants to know, how did you come up with the Sandra bench? Uh, was this a long time saying that was finally just a stroke of genius uh, after starving for a few days? <laughs> and, and are you upset that they don't still use it? I thought that they were going to like uh, in Survivor 41 say, who wants to go to the Sandra bench? Yeah, I thought they were too, but I don't know. I, why the, all of a sudden just disappeared from Mm-hmm. Jeff's lexicon when he's incorporating all these new things. Yeah. That would be a good time. I thought they would paint it and have her name on it, have like a crown on the top of it. Yeah, they had that statue. They could put like a little one right there. Yeah, yeah. like a little Sandra, Sandra throne, and you can take the statue home back to camp with you. After mm-hmm. nice yeah. Hangout. You know, Parvati, speaking of Sandra, I have one more question for you. Okay. Uh, and a lot of people want to know if you've heard any of the hubbub about Sandra going to go play potentially in Australian Survivor. I Somebody has mentioned that. I saw it on Instagram or something. Yes. Yeah, she should do it. Why not? Russell Hance did it. Mm-hmm. It didn't go great for Russell. It's probably not going to go great for Sandra either. Yeah, you don't think so. Why? Because she is so well known. Yeah. And the way that Sandra comes in to Survivor is very like, I'm the best and you better like treat me as the best. Mm -hmm. Um, She's still Sandra. So she's still really good at developing relationships with people. She's funny and she's like Mm -hmm. fun to have around. But the thing that's like her Achilles heel is that ego that's like, no one can get me because I'm the best. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're playing with a bunch of new survivor players that are really excited that have never played before, all they're going to want to do is get rid of Sandra. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how she's going to make it through that. Poverty, would you ever consider playing in Australian Survivor? Isn't it like 100 days? I think it's 50. That's a lot of days. A lot of days. I mean, it's twice as long as regular Survivor. I can't do that right now. I'm like, all right, I'll do a show if it's like a week. Yeah. Or like a day. Yeah. Oh, somebody else said it wanted me to ask you about, uh, you, you know, your friends with uh, Michelle. Would you do the challenge? Oh, they asked me to do the challenge. And you, I guess you didn't do it. Well, it's really not a good time mm-hmm. right now. Okay. <laughs> like right now is not the best time for me to like be doing the challenge. for a Right. But, but you're I- open to it? I'm open to it. Oh. I, yes, because you know what's so exciting about that to me is like 
jumping out of helicopters and like being in monster truck rallies. Like those yes. things sound fun to me. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll keep an eye out for the challenge. And of course that you have your course coming up, so you can't go do the challenge right now. Right. Can't do the challenge right now. We launched the course on October 24th. I want to give your followers, your listeners, a deal, a discount. So we have a discount code for your listeners. Yes. What is it? R-H-A-P 50. Nailed it. Let me double check that. Let me just double check that. Okay. Okay. Stand by. Yes. R-H-A-P 50. And then anyone who puts that in to the checkout will get $50 off. Mm -hmm. uh, What's the website? Winbeyondthegame.com. Winbeyondthegame.com. R-H-A-P 50. And are, are these classes that you are, are they, uh, are, are they like a, a, a live call or are they uh, recorded? They're live. Um, Suzanne and I are going to co-facilitate them live. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be leading some bonus yoga sessions um, and meditation sessions. So like a lot of the stuff we've been talking about here about how to calm yourself when you're in an intense situation, mm -hmm. um, how to really set yourself up for victory, even when the world around you is moving at a really chaotic pace. That's the kind of yoga I'm going to be leading for these sessions, specifically for these sessions to help people who this, this whole course is to help people who are high achievers, who are ambitious, who really want to make an impact in their lives, who want to make more money, who want to have more time, who want to do more things that they want to do, who want to define success on their own terms. That's like really who's going to benefit from this course. So anyone who like would, would think of themselves as a survivor winner mm -hmm. would be a great person to yes. join. An course. aspiring survivor winner. Yes. An aspiring okay. survivor winner. That's who we want. I will help you get to that place where you can always be winning yeah like okay. dj cali always be win winning <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah so poverty uh that's very exciting about the course i'm going to tell nicole that's what i want for my birthday okay oh my gosh yeah, yeah. we'll see we'll see if we'll see if she uh if she gets me what i want this year Would and then track because there's two tracks one is the all-star yeah those are the people who get like more one-on-one -on -one interaction mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. there's a swag bag for the all-star yes it's pretty legit okay okay poverty uh what else are you doing besides the course instagram instagram yeah i'm keeping pretty up to date on my instagram and that's mm -hmm. where i'll like announce any new stuff that i have coming up um, sign up for my mailing list. I'm starting to send out more emails to my list for people uh, to invite them to some of the other things I'm up to. But this course is really like, that's the biggest thing I'm doing um, for now. What about and Cameo? Cameo, I'm on Cameo. Yep, still on Cameo. Mm -hmm. and sending out birthday messages, bar mm -hmm. mitzvahs, bar mitzvahs. Lots of mental health uh, pep talk. Oh, recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's great. So P shallow cameo. Mm -hmm. All right. Poverty. Uh, this was uh, so wonderful to uh, get to catch up. And I, I just want to can't tell you enough uh, how happy I was uh, that you wanted to come on and uh, talk to us. And, you know, we're all just uh, sending uh, love to you and Alma and, uh, you know, hope you're doing great. Thank you, Rob. I always love talking with you. Yeah. Okay. Your family, a big hug and good luck with the house. I will. Me. Yeah. Me and Nicole miss you, and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Okay.